Okay, so that, that video ran out. So, new video. Um, but I'm just going to take it uh, right where I left off. Um, so, you take a tree. Uh, you have the trunk, and you have all the branches at the top, and all the roots at the bottom. But the trunk is a single thing. Right? So, the trunk is where things are focused. Uh, you have things that the plant is getting from the air and things that it are getting from the ground and the things from the ground go up into the air to help the, the leaves and the branches and the things that the branches and the leaves are getting go down into the ground to help the roots. This is an important aspect of life. Um, I see it as a as a you know, it, it parallels us in that we have brains. We have brains up top. And, uh, you know, brains generally generate electricity. Now, with the, with the trees, they are essentially taking in photons and uh, using that. I don't know if they are converting the photons to electrons, but it's helping to provide energy to the electrons so that they can uh, create chemicals or, you know, sugars that can then be used. But uh, overall, it's taking in photons um, that the roots aren't taking in. You know, this particular wavelengths. And uh, it's important. And not only that, but carbon dioxide. You know, there's abundance of carbon dioxide, at least there was, and uh, <coughs> before they, they filled it up, uh, filled the world up with oxygen, and then us animals came along and took advantage of that. Oh. Uh, this is yet another thing that I would love to make a video, you know, just an entire video on, just about, about uh, breathing. You know, moving, moving from uh, getting oxygen from the water to getting oxygen from the air. And uh, just to, to run on, um, on this, another tangent, 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 tangent. Never curving too much, just all these tangents. It's exciting. Around a circle too long. Anyway, so um, where was I? Uh, oxygen. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, when Sam and David were talking about a new level of intelligence, uh, artificial, we call it AI now, but uh, and other people call it uh, general intelligence. Well, not general intelligence. Maybe we shouldn't call it artificial intelligence. I think that'll change. Artificial intelligence will be a primitive term. And it'll be fitting, too. It'll, it'll characterize us quite well when people look back at the 20th century, how they called, uh, you know, these, I don't know what to call them, but on... Uh, computers, uh, or when AI, um, is more commonplace, um, the, what we call AI today, what we know of it is, I, I, I would hope that people wouldn't do that, wouldn't demean it by calling it artificial, like that, but anyway, they mentioned that, uh, this is something that I've said long before they made that podcast, that, uh, you know, a point that I've been making on the internet, you know, to friends, is that uh, the whole point of life, you know, this this process of evolution, if we make something better than us, you know, and we can recognize that, then I almost feel like we should be honored, you know, I, I know that People would argue 
But, you know, if I was speaking to an individual right now and not to a camera, I would be a little more, a little more vocal about how I am. I am in support of um, making the human race obsolete. And as a human, I'm sure that sounds like uh, blasphemy. Uh, what's, a, what's another one on the ship? Mutiny? Mutiny. Um, or even something else. Um, just, it, it, you know, we are I'm just going to look in here. Let's see what this is. Nice. I have a big map of the world. So let me show you. There you go. Big map of the world. But it's a flat. Uh, that's not good for kids. They should see as a globe. Yeah, maps are pretty dumb. They do horrible things to us as kids. Um, but this is... That end of the building was where I had first grade. Here's where I had second grade, third grade at the end of this side, and then fourth grade around the corner, um, fifth grade with Besser and um, Ella White. But I just kept going all the way around. And I had kindergarten at the far end in the same room. I had kindergarten in the same room that I had sixth grade. That's pretty interesting. It's Ella White School. Um, of attached to this building through history, although um, it's loose, loose attachment, but it's still it's there, and it's important too. After spending so much time uh, teaching people, Charmin, uh, just trying to be the teacher of my friends, it really was, and and I, but I, <laughs> when you do that. You wind up with people who also want to be teachers. Because if you're somebody who's talking about things and you want to teach people about things, then they want to teach you. And there's only so much time. So, you know, it becomes like a competition. You got to gotta win the other person over and be more interesting than them. And uh, otherwise, you got to, you know, like some of my friends, they just resorted to intimidation. Nice. Visitors welcome. Please stop first at the principal's office. Visitors welcome. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. I got to make sure that you see this. Camera, where are you? Oh. But anyway, there is a, a sun and planets. A mural on the lockers. I'm sure over here will be something nice. Ooh, nice. Kind of like a swamp. Dude, they have done great things with this place. Those are both beautiful. Like a jungle. With capybara. I think I see a capybara swimming. So maybe the Brazil. I see crocodiles. Or a alligator. Somebody correct me on that. But it's really beautiful. Really nice. I like what they've done with this place. Um, uh, I was talking about teaching, teaching and being friends with teachers, I guess, like if you actually taught, like at a school like Ella White or Alpena Community College or an institution like that, it, things would be a little different, uh, you know, because there is a... You know, like a bureaucracy, there's a principal, there are different, you know, secretaries and things like that to help keep people in line. And, and you have to work together against sort of, uh, you know, when you're limited, you only have so much money, only so much uh, resources, so you work together. You know, you have a common goal that you have to get... Um, Get information in the kids that's helped them develop and uh, teach them. 
So, but it's not quite like that when you're just a bunch of uh, smart asses um, hanging out, you know, whatever, doing whatever, whenever. I, I almost think every, but it's not, not every person is like this, but a lot of them are. We tend to like to impress each other. And, uh, education and impression. There's a connection there I would love to explore some more in the future. I think that it's important. Education is definitely important when it comes to transferring information. Down the line, oh, I'm on Ripley, by the way, much quieter. Much quieter at night. You get right now. I'm getting uh, one car every minute. Maybe in a few hours, it'll be one car every ten minutes. That's that's perfect. Even less. But I love I love being in a town, being in a city, being downtown. It's two a.m. right now, apparently. But uh, yeah, I love being uh. <sighs> I love being in a place that would normally have a lot of traffic. Like on the middle of a road. What do we have here? Five lanes. Five lanes. <laughs> We're going to walk the road here. Five lanes. And it's almost, you know, you might see some headlights down there. Let's look the other way. Look at that. To me, this is beautiful. I love the feeling of being, uh, you know, like having the road to yourself, uh, you know, uh, it's such a big thing. I would love like being on a, a stretch of highway, you know, like imagine, uh, I don't know, five lane, ten lane, this is five lanes, it's still close, it's quite a bit, but they both, they go, you know, it's two ways, being on a five lane, one way highway, you know. That'd be pretty interesting at night. And it's going to get like that if, if we continue building more. Right. Yeah. 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I hear a weird whining sound coming from the bank here. Oh, it's sprinklers. Maybe there's air in the sprinklers. They're making like a whistling noise. It's very strange. Very high pitch sound. 204. That clock up there. No, that's right. It says 203. Not the hands were backwards, though. I thought it was in there. 12, 10. I, moments like this, I really want to express how much I love being alive. And, you know, I don't want to say that it's, it's going to be sad when it's gone. I'm just. Um, that's, that's not what I mean about being alive. I mean being light. And I wish, I wish all life, I wish more, more stuff could have this level of awareness of itself, of respect for itself, compassion for, for itself, it's consideration. No, I know we get caught up, you know. I tend to think, you know, just like blood cells in a, a blood vessel. People racing around, you know, getting from place to place. Because that's your job. 
That's what you got to do. You, know, you, know, you serve a function. So, I got to move. No time to stand around and talk about how cool it is to be a blood vessel. Or, excuse me, how cool it is to be a blood cell. You know, when you're traveling through a circulatory system. But ultimately, you have a destination. You know, whether it's your home or your place of work. But you stop and you do something. You serve a purpose. You serve a function. Whether it's, you know, keeping and maintaining yourself. Or maintaining a system greater than yourself. I do... I think that's pretty important. <sighs> I'm gonna get some water. 2 a.m. Then we'll go to the duck park. It's only 16.14. Got 35 minutes left. Strong. Seven Eleven. So we go for the fifty cent water. It's got to be some downside. I always think about that. You know, quality of the water. Yeah, that'll be it. Please. Card. Oh, go this way. No. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Oh, one of these days. One of these days. I want to hold this in the same orientation I had. No, I've, I've missed it. Um... subject should we look back I don't really talk much about my thoughts on free will and determinism but no I think uh, I think it's pretty important to distinguish the two you know definitely I mean trying to overlap them Free will is going to lose. But if you don't overlap them, um, and not make it an argument, you know, I've already said, you know. Um, but, no, it's, it's different. There is, see, I guess my, my concern is People who want to defend free will. Uh, the reason that they want to. I think either either they, they want to defend free will or that they want to attack determinism. Let's let's go with that because I can I can argue. Uh, I can, uh, can empathize with attacking determinism. People who would want to attack such a thing as um, 
everything, you know, one thing after another, everything happening. Um, just like a little closed system. But not, maybe I shouldn't emphasize not, not the closed system thing. The whole universe, you know. Um, but still, events happening. Time, time is a big factor in it. You know, um, one thing leading to another, and being able to uh, predict that. This is this is one of the things of science that you know makes it so powerful. One of the things that have allowed us to build all these things, and before that, to survive. Okay, it's very important that this be the case. Um, and we as organisms have made mistakes, you know, to be on the safe side. And I think we are still, we are making some very uh, big mistakes to be on the safe side. Okay. Uh, I think it'd be stupid if you argued right now, well, they're not mistakes in a deterministic universe. No, no, they are. They're mistakes for us. Okay. We are playing it safe. Just like, you know, I love the, uh, the uh, tiger rustling in the grass. Is it the wind? Is it the tiger? Uh, you know, if you think it's a tiger... And you act as if it was a tiger, you're going to survive. If it's the wind, and you act as if it's a tiger, you're going to survive. If it's a tiger, and you act as if it's just the wind, you're probably not going to survive. A system like that, a setup like that, very easy to see, especially when you factor in reproduction and uh, genes. The traits that we pass on and, and the education and upbringing, you know, all of these things, you know, they all play a big role in the survival and the uh, evolution, survival of the individual and the evolution of the species, the evolution of life in general, or just the, the growth, the uh, diversity, you know, acting and reacting and creating all sorts of things, you know, it's very important, very, very important, um, there are just so many factors, so many, um, you know, depending on how the wind is blowing on a certain day, it can change, change a lot. What's in the wind? You know, is that wind coming from Africa? Is it coming from Brazil? Or is it coming from, you know, the North Atlantic? Um, wind carries with it information, carries with it. Material resources and uh, thinking. You know, I'm thinking small organisms, but I'm also thinking how small organisms uh, are the base of uh, you know, food pyramid. Much larger organisms. All of those things. How they all factor in to uh, it's a cool place. I love things like this. Like. Warehouses for stuff. So much stuff. So much stuff. Like, not even enough shelf space for all the stuff that we carry in there. It's impressive. Really. P and C Auto Electric Supply Discount Auto Parts. 1103 West Washington. Oh, I wanted to go to the graveyard in the last video. Or the. 
couple of days ago. Instead, I went to Washington Park. Where are we at now? 25 minutes? Maybe I'll go up. I'll walk up to the pavement. Very peaceful place. Even though I know I'm not supposed to be there at night and it's posted and yada yada. Maybe I'll get charged for trespassing. Or something. I'll get a $50 fine. But, uh, yeah, I ended the last video on the picnic table over there, which you can't see this camera. Ooh, there is a terrible, terrible scent in the air right now. Um, very strange. Very, um, it's kind of, it's mostly like a swamp, but uh, I was worried about Ooh, fish. I can actually hear the fish uh, jumping. Anyway, there's a yeah, there's a pretty pretty noxious smell. And it reminds me. Not just of nature stuff, like pollution. Gas. Methane, maybe. Maybe it's methane. Maybe a lot of methane is being released. Smelled it around this river before. From year to year, it changes. It's worse. I think one of the big problems for uh, for the life, for the life that's in this river. We just recently built uh, another shopping center. Another. Superstore, Myers, just west of town, and there's a lot of a lot of wetlands around it, a lot of little creeks and stuff. And a lot of automobiles up there. I think a lot of a lot of waste from that, that area, just from all the traffic, all the the salt and the parking lot and everything, you know, it all, plastics, all the, the places around it are plastics, all of them, just all of those things combining um, in the river, and the river filters that stuff out, and, and then it, the organisms in there have to deal with it, and I'd say, I don't think they appreciate it, if they can degree of appreciation, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't think we're doing the world in my favor in this way. Again, you know, we're the, we're the smart one. I don't think I really got to my point when I was talking about C. elegance and, uh, consciousness, and one of the things that they were talking about, uh, you know, how it might be an intrinsic property. I, th I think that's kind of bullshit. I guess I'm in that camp. Um, I don't even want to enter. I really don't. I don't want to entertain the idea. Um, I don't like it takes away from there you go it takes away from the beauty of the beauty of the system the communication between uh, cells you know and that's that's really that's really the gist of it you know when you think about think about human society 
I'll take away communication. Boom. What do you got left? I don't know. Go. Nothing. Either either if you take it in its present state and and take away communication. And I guess let's be more specific. Let's take away language. Okay. Take away language. We still and language. I mean, like English. Okay, not body language. Just take take English away. And take Spanish away and take all all of those kinds of languages away. Now what do you have? The system the system becomes unstable. It certainly won't last. You know, some things will. Um, but you have to uh, you have to guess what other people are thinking. You have to just react to their actions. You know, it's become hard. No sign language either. No sign language. I know it's kind of on the border of body language, communication. But no, no forming words or uh, using pictographs or anything like that. You just want something, you just get it. You know, you know. Yeah, see, I mean, what do you do? What do you do? Everything, at some point or another, you have to communicate. Whether you're selling something or buying something or, you know, whether you're dying or, you know, you can't teach your offspring. Very, it's a very important part of human civilization, of humanity. Now, once you realize how important it is and, and how things would work, I want you to think about what it would be like to be a cell, okay? And you're a collection of cells and you need to work with other cells in order to make a body, okay? And it's not quite like that, obviously, but on that scale, you are limited to chemistry, you know, subtle signals transmitted via chemistry. Oh. Cars. <clears throat> Cars and their bright lights. Um... But no, it is so important, okay? So much more important. Saying that, you know, that uh, intelligence or consciousness or, you know, any of these sorts of uh, systems of information processing and reacting these systems, um, saying that they are somehow... Uh, fundamental is a little bit of an insult unless you're just talking about things like photons and electrons okay maybe maybe on that if we talk about uh, you know but that's that's a whole other field this is uh, you know and, and sure they do sort of but um, they kind of overlap and especially one you know can evolve into the other you know, the exchange of uh, photons and electrons, um, you know, forming molecules, and then, and then uh, sharing molecules. You know, as a, as, a, as a cell, you know, you are a huge mass. You know, various, it's almost like cells, you know, they have their own organs. But every one of your uh, body's, uh, your cellular systems, they all, they all are composed of uh, 
if not just molecules, um, then um, like uh, like films and things like that, which are are essentially collections of molecules. But but it's so so different. It uh, I am I am reminded right now of of being so many things like being a child and, and walking down a hallway you know it's a different experience than being an adult walking down the same hallway just based on your size and right now I'm walking um, on the bike path um, back back to the cemetery and I, I've rode on my bike on this path um, hundreds of times at very high speed and I'm often made aware of the small organisms that use it as a sort of causeway to get through the forest okay these small flies that they would often run into okay now for them I think of this as not not even just a highway. For them, it is like a, like a cathedral, like a, like a giant tunnel, just massive, massive. You know, it's a, it's a huge part of uh, of the environment around them. You know, bigger than the trees, even. And it, it serves its function, you know. You know just that open space, that passageway of open space, you know, allows air to flow. Allows, uh, you know, flying organisms. Gives them a chance if they want to move from, you know, one, one bush uh, to another. So... But now think, think of like uh, cells, okay? Um, cells and, and the way that they would communicate with atoms. This is very dark. Very dark. And it's hard to see. I'm quiet. I love walking down here. Because I can usually pick up on things. A lot of times there's kids. I know I came back here when I was a kid, so I know that people like to come out here. Kids like to go. It's like a uh, you know, chance to get away from civilization. So that's pretty important. But you always, as a kid, you always got to be wary of adults. Kids have better hearing than adults. I don't want to get hit by a bike or something. I don't want to go the path. It is freaking impossible. Let's see. No light from the camera that hurt. talking. Of course, my gear down between the uh, kids and uh, caretakers and stuff like that. Yeah. It's okay to be on the bike path, though. I think the bike path is off limits. I'm not sure about that. All right, so, I still, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to, to just 
realize things on, on other levels. <clears throat> to realize that, you know, communication between cells is so much different than communication between organisms like yourselves. Whether it's uh, communication between, um, you know, gazelles, you know, or herd animals. Um, good example here, pack of deer. I ran into a pack of deer back here um, a couple of years ago. And uh, the buck was not too happy with me, but uh, I did my fair share of communicating with him. And uh, it was entertaining, as well as a bit scared. <laughs> but I'm sure he was obviously more scared of me. But he had a nice, nice pack with him, a nice, nice herd. Herd of deer. Yeah. There were a lot of them, a lot of females. I think that females. But, uh, so. Yeah, communication between humans, communication between other animals, and communication between um, different species. It's just different. Now there is there is communication, I think, um, above all in the form of large groups and the way that um, like oh, it's kind of hard to sum it up as I get older it uh, all gets kind of blurry but kind of kind of corporations but also cities, also states and countries, tribes, tribalism. I don't know which one is the best example to use, but I do think there are macroscopic or um, macro scale organisms, organisms bigger than us. That we are essentially uh, cells of, or organs of, you know, like if you want to just think about a company, you know, a small collection, maybe a hundred people, yeah, you kind of serve the role of like an organ in that system, whether you're a, a school, for example, whether you're a principal, a teacher, a janitor, or a construction. You know, whether you built the place, if you build, if you build a school, you play an important role in it. You're like the DNA, um, you know, reproduction. How about that, man? That's, I never really thought about that. The way the construction workers are like giving birth, building. They're not giving birth to something, something there. They're very important in the reproduction process. Reproduction of built structures. Infrastructure. It's really important, obviously. Reproduction is vital and important to life. So the reproduction of uh, So many things. Well, products. products. Products seem smaller. The products come out of buildings. Products go into buildings. I'm more interested in the buildings themselves. I'm more interested in the structures. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about mega structures. Let's talk about the fucking space shuttle. Well, maybe not space shuttle. How about the SLS? You know, or SpaceX. Falcon Heavens. 
Oh, that's impressive. Okay. And that, all the people that work there, it gave rise to that. You know, gave birth to that. Like a lot of organisms coming together to make a multicellular organism. The product of which is the Falcon Heavy. Or it is the company SpaceX. Yeah. Very important. Oh, I don't, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a, not a wordsmith. I'm not a, I'm not an author. I'm not even really good at thinking. I just, I just love this stuff. I love it all. Mm -hmm. I want. One good thing. I want a lot. Not just for life from Earth, but for all life. You know, for the universe. I don't know if I want to talk about it. as the universe, but I think that's important. There's oh my, my handle on YouTube and the search the right. It's kind of personal. I don't know, having talked about all this surface stuff, um, I think it's important, but it's, it's difficult. I want to... If there's anything that I want to 